Hi everyone, sorry that I'm out today, but thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this video that goes with section 7.6, proportional lengths. So, these are the same notes that I have posted here on Schoology, but I figured talking about might be helpful here for at least some of you, just so you can hear the stuff out loud. All we're going to talk about today is a couple of other ways that we could divide things proportionally, as we've talked about comparing sides of two different shapes uh, proportionally to one another, Wow, we're going to look at if I take a singular shape and try to split the sides up proportionally, how we can do that. So go through a handful of examples here. We're going to really focus one on one main thing here with the triangle proportionality theorem. There's a couple other little details we'll talk about as well. So uh, the first example at the top here is more just so you have a visual as to what I mean by dividing things proportionally. So let's say I have two line segments, A, B, and C, D, and I decide to put line uh, points L and M on them. If I decide to establish that AL is, uh, compares to LB and it's proportional to CM over MD, I can say that AB and CD were divided proportionally. So what I mean is this. Let's say I have a segment AB and I decide to pop L somewhere on there. So I split it up so that AL is 3 and LB is 9. Let's say I decide to have segment CD and I put M in the same type of spot. So as you can tell, CD is a little bit shorter here but I put M in the spot where CM would be two, MD would be six. I'm able to say that I can compare these split sides here and say that they're proportional as well, just by simply comparing the two ratios of sides. In this case, it'd be a proportion comparing uh, two scale factors here with one to three. Now, where we're gonna apply this more than anything else is within triangles, as we tend to do with everything else here. So we're gonna take a look here uh, at what we call the triangle proportionality theorem, which basically says if a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, it divides those sides proportionally. So I've got a diagram listed out here where I'm giving you big triangle ADE, and I decided to stick in a parallel line somewhere in, in between the, uh, in the sides here uh, where I have BC being a parallel line to side DE. So with this information, I'm going to be able to figure out and prove that these smaller sides, DB and BA, are proportional to EC and CA. What we've been doing before was trying to figure out, or, B, or we would compare maybe BA to the whole side, CA to the whole side. That's what we were doing previously. But now with being able to split sides up here we can also do this here where we can take the individual sides as long as we have some parallel lines here and some certain ways to cut things we can also take the individual sides themselves and cut them apart proportionally so let's talk about how we do this first and then we can pl apply some numbers to it and do some work with it so let's go ahead here and jot in those givens so i give you the big triangle i give you a set of parallel lines Now, in order to play around with proportionality, we need to figure out if we have similar figures in the first place. So we're going to harp back on the things that we've talked about the last few lessons here. We've seen this type of diagram here multiple times. Okay, Basically, hopefully what you recognize here is we have a small triangle nested inside a larger triangle. Let's try to figure out how those shapes would be similar to one another. Well, what's helpful here is that we have BC being parallel to DE. What that does is that allows us to create uh, some corresponding angles. So angle ABC is congruent to angle D. Angle ACB is congruent to angle E. Those would be p corresponding because those lines are parallel. So you can see the reasoning here. If parallel lines exist, corresponding angles have to be congruent. Now, what you've also learned is if you have two triangles that have two pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent, which we do here, that's enough to say that the triangles themselves are similar. So I can say the small little triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADE because of angle-angle similarity. Okay, That's your main postulate that kind of got all this similar triangle stuff started here a couple of sections back. Now, from here, again, keep in mind the overall goal. I want to prove that these 
parallel lines that we have here, okay, especially sticking in this line BC, allows me to split the two sides that it is crossing here in a proportional manner. So I want to continue to prove how things are similar to one another. So we're going to go ahead, and I kind of alluded to this earlier here, using what we know about the definition of similarity, because of the angle-angle similarity rate relationship we have between the smaller and the larger triangles, I can then say, well, the bigger side, the overall big side, AD and AB, would be proportional to the other side here, AE over AC. And that's just the definition of similarity. We know that from the definition of uh, similarity. I know that was just very repetitive there. But anyway, forgive me with that. So here's the thing. We need to somehow turn this fraction, okay, to look like our proof statement because we have some similar pieces here. If you notice, my denominators are currently the same. AB and AC, it means the same thing as the BA and CA that we have here. The problem is my numerators are different. So we probably need to find a way to trade those out. Here's how I would go about doing this. So AD is the same thing as DB and BA added together. AE is the same thing as AC and CE added together. And we can do that because of the segment addition postulate. We know a larger segment is equal to the sum of the smaller segments that are formed by it. So I'm going to go ahead here as my fifth step and write those out. So I'm going to say AD is equal to AB plus BD. AE is equal to AC plus CE. Segment addition postulate allows me to do that. Now, the reason I want to do that is because I need to, again, figure out these two guys. I need to get those integrated into this somehow because my denominators are good. It's my numerators that need to change out. So if you look right here, I've got new forms of AD that I can plug in and AE I can plug in. We can substitute and I can rewrite my fraction here in number four, my proportion as follows. AB plus BD over AB equal to AC plus C over AC. Just straight up substitution. Now, if we go back to, I think it was the second lesson, one of your properties of proportions is if you add the denominator to the numerator in each of your fractions, it's the same as if you didn't add that denominator at all. It's one of the quirkier uh, properties of proportions. But basically, because of this extra AB I've added and this extra AC, they're actually completely unnecessary in terms of the proportions. The value of the proportions would still be the same without those two values. So I can actually rewrite this as BD over AB. I'm going to switch the letters around. CE over AC. Again, switching the letters around because I can do that with lines. It ends up ultimately matching my fraction that I have at the top here, my proportion. And it allows me to prove why this works the way that it does. So my reasoning for that, if you ever have to just rewrite a proportion for the sake of making it match whatever you're trying to prove or to continue on in the proof, we just could say property of proportions in this case. So ultimately, that tells us how we can use parallel lines to ultimately divide things proportionally. And that's something that you'll use a lot more when we start applying numbers to things here in just a moment. But that's ultimately the triangle proportionality theorem. So bottom of that page here, okay, we're going to add a couple of numbers to this here, and we're also going to integrate in, again, things that we've talked about with similar triangles here. So ultimately, okay, we're going to assume in this case with that BA and ED are going to be parallel to one another. So we're going to mark those things real quick. So in, for example, uh, A here, it says CD over DA, okay? If we know the two sides that I just marked here are parallel, if CD compares to DA, that would mean CE has to compare to EB. And we're going to tuck that little proportion away to maybe help us with parts of B or C. So looking at this diagram here, let's go ahead and take a look at B. I'm going to go ahead and label it with the information that's presented. Okay. 
So CD is three, DA is six, DE is three and a half. We're trying to find AB. Now, I will tell you, what you want to be careful here is because of what we're trying to find, if I were trying to find something on the opposing side of CD or DA, I would do exactly what we just did in A, use that proportion, be done with it. However, since we are looking at not the opposing side in this case, we need to kind of go back to what we were doing previously, which is we need to compare the smaller triangle within the bigger triangle because we're dealing with the bases here of them as well. So the way that you want to set this up is you want to compare CD to the whole triangle. So that's where the nine's coming from. I need to basically say this triangle, CDE, needs to compare to CAB, meaning I need to take this three, compare it to the whole side, which you added up as nine, and set it equal to the smaller base over the larger base, three and a half over X. Once you set that up, we know how to cross multiply. It ends up coming out to AB having a length of 10 and a half. Now in C, we're going to go ahead and use what I referenced here a few minutes ago. I'm going to go ahead and label everything, as you can see there. So CB is 12, EB is 8, CD is 6. The goal is to find X. Now again, we're assuming these are parallel, okay? Now ultimately, the thing we need to keep in mind is this. If I tell you the whole side is 12 and part of it, uh, that whole, uh, excuse me, if CB is 12, EB is 8, we can do some basic subtraction here, and we can fill in the blank that CE is indeed 4. I can use that proportion from example, uh, the part A here, because again, we're dealing with the opposing sides in this case, okay? Again, based off of what we just did in the previous proof. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in some blanks here. Okay, so again, I can say 6 over X is equal to 4 over 8. That's one of the ways I could set this up. And then solve for X. X ends up being a value of 12. So just be on the lookout there again for, you know, you may be given the whole side. You have to do some really basic subtraction to figure out the partial side. Again, pay attention to whatever information that you're given. Label things as necessary. So a couple other little pieces here that can be helpful that you may see in some other diagrams. Um, similar to what we just did here, if you have, let's say, three parallel lines and they intersect a couple transversals. So kind of think of as the triangle uh, that we had, but with an extra parallel line. So if three parallel lines intersect the two transversals, they divide transversals proportionally as well. Again, think of this like with the triangle example. If you have a couple of sides, think of those acting as transversals with multiple lines, cutting them apart. Here's a quick little sketch you can draw in just so you have the visual of it. We've seen this sketch before. So ultimately, if you're given the information that Rx, Sy, and Tz are all parallel to one another, that is enough info to tell you that Rs compares to st, and that would be equal to xy comparing to yz. That would all be proportional to one another. So just again, another way that these could be set up. So this would be helpful, again, if you're dealing with polygons that are not necessarily uh, triangles, um, but ultimately other types of setups as well. You can have more than two parallel lines as long as they're cutting two sides apart that act as transversals. You're going to get some proportions out of them. Last one here where you can kind of cut things apart and get some proportional sides is what we call the triangle angle bisector theorem. If you have a ray that bisects an angle of a triangle, it divides the opposite side into segments proportional to the other two sides. Again, here's a picture of what I'm kind of talking about there. So let's say you have triangle DEF and you've got yourself an angle bisector in DG. As you can see here, I've cut apart angle D into two smaller angles, angle one and angle two, that are congruent to one another. As long as you know that angle one is congruent to angle two in this situation, where clearly you can tell it's being bisected, that is enough to tell you that GE over GF is the same thing as, it's going to be equal to DE over DF. Those sides can be compared to one another and be proportional 
as well. So again, just another way that you can, again, play around with the measurements, figure out if things are proportional or not, and find some different side measure, uh, side lengths here. So just, again, more ways that we can use lengths within uh, similar figures. A lot of this, again, is within triangles, but again, it can appear uh, in other types of polygons as well. So there's your lesson there in 7.6. Again, these notes, you can feel free to go through the video uh, or just look at the copy straight up on Schoology. Please try the homework that goes with this here for 7.6. That will, I will already have the answer key posted to it, so you can just do a direct comparison. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message, reach out to me. Otherwise, thanks for taking some time to watch us today, and have a great rest of your day.